Hi, so today I wanted to do an updated everyday makeup look. It's something that I kind of turn to every time I need to do my makeup. There'll be variations on the products that I use, quite a lot of the products I've been using them for ages, so this is not going to be a video full of new makeup products that I'm kind of hard pushing on you guys. Uh, they're products that I've been using for a long time and that I go back to again and again. And the makeup look is something that I'll use if I'm going out for the day, I'm going out to work events. It's quite often the same makeup that I'll use for an evening, unless it's a really big glam evening, then I might just amp it up for the evening a bit more, a bit more intensity, uh, a little bit more, just a bit more. <laughs> If you're new here, hi, I'm Amberina and I do makeup, skincare, hair and style videos and I would love for you to subscribe if you're not already but without going on too much, let's get into doing up the face. So I've already done my skincare, I did my skincare a few hours ago so it's had time to settle in, not that you need to but I would leave a good five minutes between your skincare and your makeup if you've got the time just so that it gives the skincare time to settle in it's not all sitting on top of your face because I find that when you go straight into makeup from skincare that's when you get that pilling you know when the makeup starts rolling off your face which we all hate. I'm going to look ridiculous, but I'm just going to pin my hair back. As I said at the beginning, this is my real everyday makeup. So in keeping with the reality, yep, I need my roots done, but I didn't want to wait any longer to film this. So here we go. <laughs> For me, everyday makeup is all about the skin and making sure the skin looks as beautiful as possible. Whatever beautiful means for you, whether that means flawless or dewy or matte or whatever. But for me, I just want my skin to look at its best. And then everything else is just an added bonus. So I'm going to start off with a primer and I'm using the By Terry Hyaluronic Primer just because I want that extra dewiness. And this is really, really hydrating. And it's perfect if you do want a glowy, dewy makeup finish rather than a matte finish. You can actually feel the hydration going into your skin as you put it on. Now I don't have a separate under eye primer. I do have my eyes on one, but I don't have one. So I'm going to just put a tiniest bit right under my eyes where I will apply concealer. If I was doing a really heavy eye with lots of eyeshadows and stuff, I would do my eyes first and then do my base, you know, just in case there's any fallout or eyeshadow just kind of all over the place that I can clean up later. But I'm not really doing that today. So I'm just gonna go straight in with the base. And like I said, for me, it's all about the base. So I'm going to start with the Milk Illuminous Blur Stick and I'm just gonna apply that where I want a little bit of extra glow. And I know I have already applied primer, but this just gives an extra tackiness and extra glow to the skin. And it's almost just evening out the skin tone already, just a little bit. I'm hardly touching the skin with it because I don't want to use too much. I already have primer on, and so I don't want to overload the skin. I don't want to look cakey. I just want to add a little bit of glow. And with my foundation brush, this is from Sculpted by Amy. It's a double-ended brush, and I'm just pushing that into the skin, I'm not moving it around too much. I'm just pushing it into the skin. And this will also <laughs> remove any excess if I've applied a little bit too much. Great. So that is done. And then for more glow, I love this Glow Illuminating Serum. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's called, but as for all the items and products I mentioned, I will link everything in the description box below. This is from Revive, and it is the most beautiful glowy serum and you don't need a lot. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit where I want even more Ooh, glow, she says. That was quite a big amount. <laughs> So I'm just going to use what's there and distribute it around the face. And this has a lovely bronzy glow, which I love. I know we are not in the height of summer, but I like a bronzy, glowy makeup basically all year round. I will use these kind of products all year round, especially at this time of year when we're moving into autumn because my skin is losing the glow that I had from the summer holidays. So even more so actually, now is the time that I want to use these things. And this little brush is the brush that came with the Revive Glow Serum. And yes, I basically have applied this 
just about all over my face because I like a full-on glowy makeup and we'll add highlighter later on in the areas where I want even more glow. Now before I do my eyes I'm going to go in with a little bit, that's the wrong brush, sorry, <laughs> before I do any other base products I'm going to do a little bit of colour correcting just under my eyes where I have you can see like really dark circles and part of that is genetic, part of that is because I am iron deficient, I do take iron supplements, but because of something I have called beta thalassemia, iron deficiency is always going to be a problem. So I'm always blessed <laughs> with dark circles under my eyes. I'm going to use a little bit of a corrector. This you can't buy anymore, I'm afraid. This is from Becca, and when I heard that they were going under, I bought like quite a few of the under eye corrector because I love it so much. I think I have this in both shades. I have it in the light one and this is the medium dark one. And I'm just using a light hand with this small brush. This is a crown brush and obviously without my glasses I can't read which brush it is. I lied. This is the blank canvas E10 brush. So I'm just going to just apply it with a very light hand because I don't want a lot of product and I don't want it to be cakey. I want this to be like a really nice fresh makeup so I'm just using a very light hand oh and a little tip here the further away from the brush that you hold the handle the lighter the hand you will have like if I was to hold it there it's quite hard to be as light handed you end up with a lot more pressure I mean instantly this corrector which is a slightly peachy undertone just knocks back the darkness under my eyes and also it means that I need to use less concealer that's a bonus too just to have less concealer meaning less cakiness I don't know what I'm going to do when my back stock of the Becca product runs out I've heard that the Beauty Pie one is brilliant as well. I may have to try that one out, but I know I've got I've got a good amount of these in my drawers. I will be okay for a while. And then I like to just press it in with my fingers. Just I feel that the warmth from the fingers helps this to meld with the skin. And obviously using fingers will take off any excess. But can you see the difference already? so much brighter under my eyes. <laughs> what a difference. I'm also going to use a little bit of this just around my mouth here. Tiniest amount. I'm using the same brush as I have a little bit of pigmentation in this area around my mouth. So I'm just going to knock that back as well. And again it means I will need less base product like in terms of foundation to achieve that kind of that flawless skin look because I have knocked back some of the pigmentation. So I'm just going to press that in around my mouth as well. For my foundation I'm using a really old one as in like I've had this for a long time in my collection. This is from Repechage which is not a really well-known brand I don't think. I don't see it all over social media and Instagram and I, my only bugbear with this is that it doesn't have any well, I don't have any, um, there's no pump, there's no applicator, so I literally have to take it on my finger and then dot it around. But for when I want a really natural, natural look on my skin, this is the one. And it's a perfect shade match for my skin outside of, you know, tanned summer skin. This is the perfect one. And it just gives the right amount of, I'd say, light to light medium coverage. And the danger with this one, when I do that, to get it onto my fingers, is that there's drips and it will drip on me. In fact, did I drip on myself? No, <laughs> we're good. I tend to use a brush more than I do a beauty blender. And I don't know why, because I know that when I do use a beauty blender, I do get a really lovely finish. But if you can see, I, <laughs> I use the action of a beauty blender with the brush, especially around the areas where I've applied any other products underneath. So for example, around here where I've applied the corrector, I will definitely pat in 
the foundation because I don't want to move where I've placed the foundation. I do have a bit of redness there and there. So really, in theory, I should have used a little bit of a green corrector here and here. Let's just pretend that I did. <laughs> I'll use a little bit more of a sweeping motion up on my forehead because I haven't applied anything underneath there that doesn't want to move or rather that I don't want to move. But I don't know if you can see that is just given me an even skin tone but it looks like my skin i wonder if i can zoom in i'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see before i do concealer i am going to apply a little tiny bit of eyeshadow i'm using this is probably the most used eyeshadow brush in my collection it's one of the louise young brushes and i'm going to use from this tom ford palette this golden kind of rosy gold shade and I'm just going to take it on the side of my brush rather than on the point of it tap off the excess and then I'm just going to press that into the moving part of my eyelid and I love this shade for an everyday eye it's not too much it just adds a sheen to the eyelids obviously if you have a different color skin to me it's going to look slightly different on you I haven't used a primer on my eyelids I don't use eye cream on my eyelids either so it doesn't tend to crease these Tom Ford shade shadows are they're really long wearing I find if I've applied it at the beginning of the day it's still there at the end of the day and it still looks good it hasn't kind of creased or flaked off or anything like that and I'm taking it just as far as my crease I have found as I've got older that you know my eyelids are coming down a little bit so a wing is a lot harder for me to do I used to be that girl that always wore a wing less and less now because it just takes me a longer time to do and I use the very point of the crease where I didn't really apply any shadow onto the brush to go right into the crease and just make sure that that is blended so I don't have any harsh lines just want it to look soft and natural I guess and then I'm just using another like a blending brush this is from MAC it's 217 whoa who remembers the day when everyone used 217 I think I bought this in multiples at the time it used to go out of stock the minute it came back into stock because everyone used it so I'm using this just to blend it out and take this outer corner out to my eyebrow basically for eyeliner you guys know I have raved about this all the time I think I've probably been through about 15 16 of these this is the dark side by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. It's a waterproof gel eyeliner and I love it because I don't have to sharpen it. And it is properly waterproof, like it will stay on all day. And I think it has the, hold on, I have another one. Yeah, I told you I have this in multiples. So on the other end, it does have, yeah, a little sharpener. I've lost the sharpener on this one, but that's fine. I'm going to keep using this one till I finish up the pencil and as you can see it's a twist up pencil so I don't waste any sharpening it and I love that so I will use this in my upper waterline look away if you're squeamish and I find that the best way to do this is to look down less chance of stabbing yourself in the eye if you look down and then just run this along your upper waterline and this just makes your eyelashes look thicker and longer because it kind of gives the impression that your lashes are starting further back than they really are. Depending on my mood I will either use the eyeliner all the way across my eyes and wing it out when I've got time but today I'm just going to take the eyeliner and place it at the outer lash there and then follow the line of my eye and just take it out as far as my crease and then bring that back to the lash line that is it for an everyday look that's all I want to do sitting back a bit into the mirror just to check that it is symmetrical and knowing my luck because I'm filming this for you guys it won't be symmetrical the other thing is if your eyelids are beginning to come down on the top like mine are don't do that <laughs> when you're doing your eyeliner because you're not getting a true representation of what your eyes will look like when you're out and about in your daily life because you don't spend your day with your eyebrows raised all day so keep your eyes in the position that you would normally be in basically look straight into the mirror is that symmetrical just add a little bit of lift there yeah, i just have to hold my skin there because there's a slight fold i'm happy with that <laughs> phew i thought i would really mess that up 
filming. Eyelashes, and I'm going to curl them first. This is the Troy Surratt eyelash curler, which I love because it's really wide this way and it really opens wide this way, so I can get all my lashes in. Back at the beginning of summer, like before I went on holiday, I had a lash lift, which was the best thing. Basically, your lashes are permanently curled up as if you've used an eyelash curler. Morning, noon and night, and I just think that's the best thing. And I am planning to go back and have it done, but I just haven't had the time. It lasts about, I mean, they say it lasts about six weeks, but on me, it literally lasts about three months because my lashes are naturally quite curly, quite long as well. I guess that's why I've never really taken the time and trouble to really get to grips with false lashes. I'm terrible at applying false lashes. And I hold the lash curler for about 10 to 15 seconds on each side. Next up, I'm going in with a lash primer. Now, if there's one thing that you buy as a result of watching this video, I would say go out and get this lash primer. This is the Dior Show Maximizer 3D Lash Primer. It's a white primer. You apply to your lashes beforehand and I, I like doing this because it conditions your lashes while you're wearing it. So, you know, even if you're wearing mascara all day, you've got this conditioning your lashes all day. But it makes your mascara so much more dramatic. Like you can get away with one coat of mascara and also you can get away with the cheapest mascara. You don't have to go and buy an expensive mascara if you bought the Dior Show primer. It's just incredible. I will definitely, definitely link this below and I'll make sure to link it from as many different sites as possible because this also sells out quite quickly. I've used this for years, absolutely years, and I love it. And when I don't use it, I can really see the difference. Probably look a little bit crazy now because my lashes are white, but bear with me. I'm just gonna let this just dry down for about 30 seconds or so. You don't want it to completely dry, but you don't want it too wet either. So I'll let it sit for about 30 seconds, just so it loses its real wetness, but not to the point of being dry. Just remembered I forgot to apply my lip balm. This lip balm, I was talking about this on Instagram, this is the best lip balm that I have used. I discovered it, well, I was sent it and I started using it while I was on holiday. And even in the heat with the air conditioning and all of that, this has just made such a difference to my lips. This is by Revision Skincare. And I think it's called a Youthful Lip Replenisher. You will not go to sleep without putting this on at night. And it stays on all night. Like when I wake up in the morning, I can still feel it on my lips. It hasn't disappeared into my pillow. My lips are hydrated, nourished and moisturized in the morning. So if you are a matte lipstick wearer, which I am not anymore, but if you're a matte lipstick wearer, you definitely need something like this overnight to really make sure that your lips are hydrated in the morning. Right, let's go in with the mascara. Any mascara will do. I'm currently loving this from B3 and it's their Absolute Look Mascara. And I take it right into the roots of the lashes and then just wiggle my way up. Another little tip that I have for you is once you've applied your mascara on your lashes, turn your brush so that it's vertical and you can really fluff out and shape your lashes, like place them almost where you want them to sit, like fan them out. And I'll always focus on the outer corner as much as I can to help elevate the eye at the side and follow the line of that tiny little mini wing that I drew with the eyeliner. So that is one coat of mascara because I use that Dior Show primer underneath and it's really made a difference. Stupid faces that we make when we apply mascara, they are obligatory, by the way. <laughs> and if you get any mascara on your skin, <laughs> like I just did there, a tiny little bit there. Just wait till it dries. Don't try and rub it off. You'll just smear it and it's a disaster. So just let it sit there, let it dry. And then when it's dried, you can literally just, it'll just flake off. You can just flake it off. So yeah, I'm just gonna let that little spot of mascara sit there on my brow bone. And then once, once it's dry, I'll take it off. Quick battery change because Technology is not my friend. Next up, we're gonna go in with concealer and I'm using my, it's an oldie, the Shape Tape Concealer from Tarte. And I'm in the shade, I think it's Warm Deep Honey, but I will link it below. And instead of applying it directly onto my skin, because I don't want to use too much, I've already got the corrector on there. So I'm just taking some onto my brush instead. I'm using the same brush that I used 
to correct and I'm just going to apply it where I can see there's still some darkness coming through and this shade has a slightly peachy undertone as well so it helps to knock back that darkness especially right in the inner corner of my eyes there and I'll tend to take this down a little bit the side of the nose as well because it just helps to even out that skin and almost makes the nose look slightly slimmer as well because you're kind of taking that shade of your skin a little bit further in so it kind of gives the illusion that that your nose is slimmer than it is without having to do any heavy contouring which you know I don't do on a daily basis. So I'm using it at the outer corner just underneath where I applied the eyeliner. I'm not applying any concealer to the center portion of, of the under eye I'm just joining up the two and blending that through so that I don't have too much product there which is where I have lines so you know it would just sit in those lines. I used to be that person that used so much concealer in the hope that it would really cancel out my dark circles but all it did was emphasize it more really to be honest and I find that you know when you've used a corrector you you don't need to use so much concealer. I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here but just in case you hadn't gone down the corrector route you'll see I'm hardly I mean literally hardly using anything really using such a light touch because I really want my skin to show through and that a lightweight foundation that I have has done the job of kind of evening out my skin tone but letting my skin show through so I'm really only applying this where I need to and I need to put it around my nose because I do have a little bit of redness there again just a tiny amount because otherwise it's going to settle in the into those lines and then I will just apply a little bit around the corners of my mouth where I placed the corrector earlier on and that's really kicked back that pigmentation that I have around the mouth I have had a little breakout just there so I'm going to apply a tiny bit right on top and then just to brighten up the center of my face I'm just using a little tiny tiny bit down the center of my nose and just blending that through into the bottom half of my forehead just on the bridge of my nose actually I'm not going to take it all the way down the nose and while we're at it a tiny bit on the tip of my nose just to lift that up a little bit it feels like my face looks a little bit flat so here is where I add in a little bit of definition a little bit of color and a little bit of highlight I'm using my really well loved as you can see shade and illuminate this is by Tom Ford and I like like to apply this with my fingers because when I use my fingers together I can feel where my cheekbones are it's more symmetrical I don't know how else to say it. you know your face you know your face shape so I can place my fingers at the same place and then just run it in a little bit now if I was to do that on each side with a brush I can tell you 100% I would not get that symmetrical and this way I know I placed it in the same place <laughs> on both sides I was just checking and anything that's left over on my fingers because obviously there is I just tap that underneath my nose I don't really contour my nose as such if I've used this on my cheeks and I've got a little bit left over on my fingers that is what I do I mean you could if you wanted to let's do it I don't normally do this but you could if you wanted to use what you have left over on your fingers and just use that to contour a little bit on your nose waste not want not <laughs> and I like cream for this because I feel that it blends better I don't tend to if you've not noticed I don't tend to use really I don't tend to use powders on my skin if I can help it I just find that's quite aging so I'll use the same brush that I use for my foundation and I will blend that through I'm not moving it around too much I'm literally just blending it and that's already given a warmth with a bit of shape to the skin and then with clean fingers not the ones that I applied the contour with with clean fingers I will just tap in what I applied to my nose oh and I forgot to say the shade and illuminate I use in the shade 2 yeah I have it in shade 2 that glow that you've been seeing on my cheeks in recent videos it is from this this is from sculpted by Amy and this is the blush of dreams it's this beautiful peachy coral and it might look oh the sun's come out <laughs> It might look a little bit scary in the pan, but it is beautiful on the skin. It's a cream blush, which I'm gonna apply using the same brush. So I tend to use the same brush for my foundation to blend out the contour, to apply the cream blush, and also for my highlight, I'll use it to blend because I just find that it helps everything blend better. I mean, obviously you can go 
get really busy and use different brushes for everything but I thought I would show you how I actually do my makeup really rather than like some ideal of how I would do my makeup this is how I would actually do it and I don't have time when I'm doing my makeup to go crazy with 16 different brushes for my face so just give a light spray on my brush with MAC Fix Plus but I find that if I spray the brush a little bit it just blends better I mean it blends beautifully anyway but when I've done that it blends even better a little goes a long way so I will just tap off on the back of my hand because you can always add more <laughs> but it's really hard to take it off if you apply too much so I kind of do this silly face so I can find the real kind of apples in my cheeks and then just pat it on. You can see there's hardly anything there, but I would much rather build it up than go in with too much and then find that I have to start my makeup all over again. <laughs> and inevitably, I've got more on one side than the other, but that's okay. Can you see how it's just like lifted my cheeks? I haven't applied any highlighter yet, but it has just lifted my cheeks and they're still radiant. That glow is still coming through. I recently got back into blush, like in a major way. I, I look at some of my old pictures and I look just washed out because I wasn't really a blush girl, to be honest, hardly. I go quite easily without wearing blush and recently I've just become totally addicted to blush. I love how it just lights up your face, lights up your eyes as well. I think I heard that the reason we wear blush here is because it makes the whites of your eyes look whiter, which kind of makes sense. It wakes you up, keeps you looking makes you look alive right whatever's left on the brush tiny bit I just tap it onto the nose almost in line with my cheekbones it just gives it that natural flush as you would if you'd been running a marathon <laughs> right, I think it's time to flick off this little bit of mascara that found its way up here and look at that it's just gone you just need to let it dry and it will flick off right this is where oh, this is the magic Okay, I know I said before that if you were to buy one thing from this video, it would be the Dior Show Primer. I lied. Two things you need to get. If you haven't already got this, this is the magic. This has changed. I mean, this is sometimes all I wear. I'll wear this on my eyes. I'll wear this on my cheeks. I'll wear it to kind of just emphasize my cupid's bow and then just lip balm and nothing else this is from westman atelier it's by gucci westman and it's her super loaded tinted highlight it comes in three shades but this shade is just incredible for me for my skin if you've got skin my tone i don't know if it, you can see the the shade of it it's kind of peachy and oh it's amazing so again i go in with my finger and i'll just take on one finger because this goes a long way this is pricey but luckily it goes a long way so I'll just take on one finger rub those two fingers together because that's enough for both cheekbones I promise you and I'll warm it up on my fingers a little bit like this and then I'll just go on the tops of my cheekbones and pat that on and you can go heavier with this and I have I do go heavier with this but with just this really natural everyday look this gives enough glow and come up close can you see that it just oh, it just perfects the skin I mean this shade works so well for me that I can use it as I mean it's everything I just use it as my highlighter and it gives enough warmth that it looks like I've got blush on I mean I'm today I've gone you know we've, we're doing a full makeup today aren't we but <laughs> if I'm just doing no makeup literally no makeup just lip balm I'll make sure to put this on and it just gives you that. You can see it better there, the way the light is. Love that, absolutely love it. And then I'll just take a tiny bit more on the tip of my ring finger. Again, warm it up, like rub it together between the two fingers and I'll apply teeny weeniest bit on the bridge of my nose, just where I applied that concealer and then on the tip of my nose with what's on this finger. For my brows, I tend to brush them down. I don't do a big big old brow at all and I don't really change the shape of my brows to be honest I'm very happy with my brows <laughs> didn't even do my brows this is a true fact I didn't even do anything to my brows for my wedding day I mean granted I got married 20 coming up to 23 years ago I'd never had my eyebrows shaped or anything 
even before my wedding day. More often than not, I would just brush up my brows and not, I wouldn't, I don't even fill them in. I'm using a really, really good brow serum and I've seen such a difference that I'm, to be honest, only really filling in my brows because it completes the look. But normally I would just brush my brows up and go. <laughs> I don't really do anything else. This is more for your benefit than mine. This is, by the way, a Laura Geller eyebrow pencil and it's got the spoolie on the other end, but any eyebrow pencil that works for you. If you are not using a brow serum, I would really recommend it if you are, you know, if you have any sparse areas, you have to be, I'm just gonna brush these back up again. You have to be regimental about it and consistent because you won't see any results for like four to six weeks and then you will see the difference. It's a bit like using a lash serum. It's made, I mean, I didn't really have that much of a problem with my brows, but since using a lash, uh, a brow serum, it's made, I can see the difference it's made. Like it's better than it ever was before. I'm just gonna brush these into place. If we're gonna be really extra, we could use a brow gel, like to kind of freeze them into place. Can't find it. I think one of my girls has taken it. That's the thing about having teenage daughters. Okay, let's pretend that I used a brow gel. That's not the end I want. Let's just pretend I'm using a brow gel to kind of almost freeze these into place. So I brush them on a diagonal and I think that looks more natural than brushing them up. And then these I'll brush out at the ends just to lift the eye. Oh, I just spotted another little drop of mascara there, which I'm just gonna Flake off. And then, using the spoolie, I just run it along the top to smooth out any lines. I mean, if you want to get busy, you can then add some concealer under your eyebrows and above as well, you know, to carve out your eyebrows, but I don't really do that. Oh, I have to show you my latest lip colour love. This is one of my favourite lip liners. This is Hollywood Honey by Charlotte Tilbury, and I use this with just about every single lipstick. So I'm just going to line my lips. I don't know if you can see, I have, I mean, quite pigmented lips anyway. It almost looks like I'm wearing lip liner. Half the time I just wear lip gloss like I'm wearing right now and I don't even wear lipstick. But if you can see there, it looks like I've got lip liner on and I haven't, not yet. I will have. <laughs> but that is just the way that my lips are pigmented. So I just follow the natural line of my lips. I don't really overline too much. Like most of us, my lips are lopsided. They are not symmetrical. In fact, I don't think my face is symmetrical. My lips definitely are not symmetrical. So if I do overline, slightly overline there, right there, just there and nowhere else, because I want it to look natural. But that is just to get that symmetry. And then I've also learned if you want to kind of lift your face, I line up to the top of the cupid's bow. And because like everything is beginning to go south <laughs> as I get older, I feel that my lips kind of, they go down. Can you see if I'm not talking? they seem to kind of go down. So to try and counteract that, I don't take the lip liner all the way to the bottom of my lip. I'll stop it about there. And that just helps give the illusion of a lifted lip. I wanna show you my current favorite lipstick. This, look at the packaging first of all. This is from Beauty by La Perla. So La Perla is a lingerie range and they do beautiful swimwear as well. But they have recently launched, when I say recently, it's like over a year, but um, a beauty line, so there's skincare, perfume, and makeup, and oh, the lipstick. This one, I think it's called Rosewood Red. I love this. Beautiful. And I don't need too much. It's really, really pigmented. It's not a matte, it's like a satin finish lipstick. And if I wanted it to look like a satin finish, then I would have taken my lip balm off. But I kind of like a little bit of gloss, so I've kept my lip balm on underneath. And then I'll just use my fingers to push it in and smudge the lip liner into the lipstick. Isn't that just, oh, the prettiest shade. I love that. Literally my favorite lipstick currently. Now, obviously I have a little bit on my finger which I used to push that lipstick in. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna push that together on my two ring fingers and I'm gonna apply that to the real apples of my cheeks. I mean, you could go in with a bit more lips. I love using lipstick as blusher. God, I can't tell you. It's like the quickest, let's do it. It's the quickest thing, just for that little pop of color right there. You see there's just a tiny little bit there and there. And I'm gonna use my fingers just to push that in. So not everywhere where I applied blusher, just on the absolute high point of the apples of the cheeks. And it just, 
I find, I find it brings everything together. I have not set under my eyes with powder because I, I just normally don't. But I recently tried out this TikTok hack that has been going around where you use one of these little, oh it's dirty, a little triangular powder puff to press the powder into your eyes and I am absolutely loving that. So I'm going to do that now at the end. It's not something I've been doing every day but I have started doing it more often these days just because I love how it just sets under the eyes so much. So I'm going to use a By Terry loose powder and I think this is in the shade either medium or apricot. I will check and link it down below. It's a loose powder so I'm just going to pick up a little bit with the tip of my powder puff, not too much, and then I will press that in to where I applied my concealer. This is a hyaluronic powder so it's not going to dry out under the eyes which is the main reason I don't use powder under my eyes because I hate how it just makes my eyes look older but this doesn't because it's a hyaluronic powder. For me always less is more. I can always go back in and add more but I can't take it off so I'll use very little. And I am done and ready to go. Take my hair out while I say to you if you're still here after I think this is going to be a very long video. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I really appreciate you still watching because I think, yeah, this is going to be a very long video. But hopefully this answers the questions from those of you who've been asking about my everyday makeup look. And if I was going to go out, this is my everyday makeup look. This is how you would see me if I was meeting you in town or if I was going to a press event. This is kind of what I would do. Elements of it, Sometimes I'll do the eyeshadow, sometimes I won't. If I'm going out at night, I will amp up the eye makeup a little bit. I might amp up a little bit more of the highlight, maybe a different lipstick, although I'm loving this lipstick for day and night at the moment. That is it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and me just chatting you through my makeup. Apologies if any of you were distracted by my Invisalign. I have I think about two months left to go so I'm really trying to make sure I'm wearing them as much as possible. Yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought of the products that I showed you. I mean I use different products almost every day but the ones that I use every day is the Westman Atelier highlight and if I'm wearing mascara I will always be using the primer because those two are non-negotiable. Oh and my lip balm. I love love love. Thank you so much for watching. I think I've said that three times now so I, that is definitely a sign that I should end this video now. I will see you guys next time. Please do subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're not already and I'll see you next week.